Greetings and welcome to the basement. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the user interface system for Unity and how to use anchor points to avoid your interface exploding into a million pieces because your users are playing at different resolutions. Even on the PC, where you kind of have a, the resolution of 1920 by 1080 as a kind of sort of standard, you'll still have people playing at wildly different resolutions. It gets exponentially worse if, say, you want your game to run on a phone, iOS or Android. You poor fool, you have my sympathies. Because that UI is a mess. It's fun, as in the Dwarf Fortress sense of fun. But by using anchor points and being a little bit sane on how you construct your user interface and a couple of other tricks, it can be a little bit less fun, which in this case is good. To start things off with, let's drop a simple UI element in here. Now we can either do that by going through game object, UI, and selecting the appropriate item, or you can right click in the hierarchy to do the same thing. I generally tend to right click in the hierarchy, no magical reason for that, it's just what I happen to do. Dropping in a text component here, now here's the first thing to understand about the Unity UI system. By default, it's going to create an overlay style UI. In a future video, I will talk more about the differences between the various UI styles. But overlay is like your traditional HUD. It's overlaid, shockingly, on the top of everything else. Your UI will always be on top. It's an overlay. Now, as a result of that, it kind of sizes the window by using Unity units as pixels, which means it's really stupidly big. Uh, to illustrate this, I'm going to drop in a cube just for illustration purposes. I'm going to make sure that cube is at the center of the world and not who knows where. If I look at my game view, I can see that, yep, okay, there's my cube at the center of the world. Now let's take a look at our UI. Now when you're using your UI in Unity, you're going to want to always be in 2D mode. You can manipulate things in 3D mode, and there are some scenarios in which this is a good idea, but generally speaking, you're going to want to be in 2D, and you're going to be wanting to use the Rectangular Transform tool because that gives you guides and a couple of other things that makes placing your UI a lot easier. So switch to 2D mode. I'm going to double-click on my text to focus in on it, zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole screen preview, and then select my cube. Yeah, there it is. I mean, you can't see it at this resolution because, like I said, we're like looking at like a kilometer's worth of space in Unity. But it is there. Yeah, it's it's a bit odd. So just keep that in mind. Um, a very common thing that I will do when working on things, and I've got a lot of complex UI going on, is I will uh, disable this object and I'll have a little script running in the background that says, OK, well, when I uh, uh, start the game, I'm going to go to grab whatever canvas is supposed to be on my default and turn it back on. Otherwise, this kind of gets in the way of working on things I have found. But to continue on with our text box, now I'm going to start off by placing this in the center because it also shows why it's a good idea to have your rectangular transform tool on. As I drag this, you will notice that I get offsets. And it also snaps me once I hit the center. It's not a very strong snap. There's just that slight little hesitation there that makes it relatively easy to snap something dead center in the screen. Now here I'm going to pause for a moment and do something that has nothing to do with the UI. And that is changing the default skybox here. Since I'm doing purely a UI demo here, just leaving this default skybox, it really bugs me. I mean, that's, I don't know. It's lazy, it bugs me, I think it makes it difficult to see when you're focusing on UI, so I want to get rid of that, both in the game and the editor. So to get rid of it in game, I'm going to go into the main camera, and I'm going to change my clear flags to solid color, so that way I can control what color it is. I'm also going to go into my lighting tab, which, by the way, remember this is not open by default, you need to go into Window, Rendering, and Lighting Settings to bring that up. And I'm going to change my Skybox material to None. 
And now I no longer see it in the editor, and of course I no longer see it in game. That has nothing to do with the actual UI system, it just bugs me, so it's going away. Great, now let's return back here. So I've got a text box, it's in the center. Oh, and I'm also gonna get rid of my little test cube here. He does not need to be there. I love this microphone, you're gonna see me since like, I'm peering around this thing, see my keyboard. So I got rid of that. Switch back over to scene view. So it is now centered. It's locked on the center of the screen. And if I manipulate, I don't need you upstairs right now. Nor do I need gizmos on for this mode. As I manipulate my screen, it r roughly, relatively speaking, stays in the center. It gets a little bit off if I really crush it down. But for the most part, it looks like it is dead center. And I could even fix the uh, slight offness because if you look at the text, it's anchored to the upper left-hand corner. If in my inspector, I come over here to my font settings, I can change the alignment to be dead center, which by the way, is the default for buttons. This is how your buttons are usually set up. And now regardless of how I abuse my viewport, it's going to remain perfectly centered. Now something fun happens if I move it without changing the anchor point. So let's say I want it in this top left hand corner here. Fair enough. Place it up there, look at my game window. All right, that looks reasonable. Oh, whoops, it just disappeared. Actually it gets even worse if you are not on a fixed aspect ratio. So if I say change this to free aspect, you ink. Straight off the screen it goes. So what is going on here? This is the difference between absolute and relative positioning. Also notice now because my viewport has changed in size, it's no longer in the upper left-hand corner. This is currently absolute positioning. When these little triangle things here, this is your anchor point. When they're all converged together in a single point like this, you are operating in absolute mode. What I have said is I'm saying, okay, I am defining the size of this text box in an absolute size, and I am defining its position in terms of an absolute offset from this point. So that means it will always maintain this distance regardless of how big my viewport is. You can see here it's still the same distance regardless of what I do. That is absolute positioning. And absolute positioning can work as long as you're sensible about where you put this anchor point. Where it tends to break is if you're getting lazy and you're not paying attention to that anchor point. So again we go back to I want this in this top left hand corner here. Well, what I can do is I can click on our anchor target here and I can set it to any of these presets. So I can lock it to the top left hand corner. Now the size is still absolute, this offset is still absolute, but since the offset's based on this top left hand corner, almost regardless of how I abuse my viewport, it will behave. Now I can't actually get my viewport small enough to push it off there. But in theory, if I could get this viewport small enough, it would push that text off. Also notice how the box is taking up the same exact amount of space. So if I zoom in in this horribly distorted window here, and you can see that the size of the box is still the same. Get things reset here. So as long as you are being sensible with your anchor points, your UI should be relatively robust, even if you are doing crazy things. Now, as far as testing it, unless you are specifically designing your game with the idea that the user is going to be 
changing and resizing your game window, you don't really have to worry about making your UI resilient against free aspect random resizing. Um, now, if you are intending to allow that, okay, yeah, you got to test for it, but that's a little excessive. Generally speaking, you'll want to go through and just simply make sure that it works at different aspect ratios and possibly test it at a couple of specific sizes. As long as you are certain that your UI can survive that, you should be good. Now, in order to prevent these videos from being too long, uh, this is going to be a two-parter. So in this first part, we talked about absolute positioning. In part two, I'm going to talk about relative positioning and relative sizes. And so, until the next video, take care.